So in this lecture, I'd like to continue our discussion on fluids and what happens to objects when those objects are placed into fluids. And more specifically, I'd like to talk about a very important concept in fluid mechanics known as Archimedes' Principle. Now, Archimedes' Principle can be used to answer some very important but basic questions such as the following two questions. Question number one. Why do some objects float, such as wood, while other objects sink, such as rocks? Question number two. Why do objects weigh less in water than on land? For example, if you take a very heavy rock and you try to lift that rock on land, you will find that it's easier to lift that rock in the water than on land. So we're going to use Archimedes' principle to answer this question. So, let's begin by looking at the following diagram. Let's suppose we have an open container that's open at the top. And let's suppose we fill this container to the brim with some fluid, let's say water. Now, let's say we also take a block, a solid block, and place that solid block inside our fluid. So we submerge this solid block into our fluid-filled container. Now, we submerge it in a way such that the distance from the top face of the block to the surface of my water is H1, and the distance from the bottom face of my block to the top of my fluid is the distance H2. Now, I want to examine all the forces acting along the y-axis, along the y-direction. Remember, whenever you submerge an object, a solid object, into a fluid, the fluid will exert a force on that object, on every side of that object. So, there are two forces acting along the y-axis on our object. The force number one and force number two. Now force number one is simply the force due to the fluid that's exerting on our block from this direction going downward. Likewise, the fluid also exerts a force in this direction. Now of course the fluid also exerts a force in this direction and this direction and so on, but we're only looking at the forces acting along the y-axis. So let's choose going up to be positive and going down to be negative and let's find the sum of these forces. So let's find the sum of the forces along our y-axis. So the sum is equal to we choose the force going up to be positive, force going down to be negative. So F2 minus F1. Now what is force? Recall that pressure is equal to force divided by area. So if I multiply both sides by area, I find that pressure is equal or force is equal to pressure multiplied by area. So we get force 2 is equal to pressure 2 times area, while force 1 is pressure 1 times area where this area is simply the face area of this block. And since the top and the bottom have the same exact area, these two A's are exactly the same. Now, P2 is simply the pressure going from the bottom up, and P1 is the pressure going from the top to the bottom. Now, let's take out this A, and we get the following result. A multiplied by, in parentheses, P2 minus P1. Now, what is pressure in the fluid? In other words, what is fluid pressure? Well, we found that fluid pressure is the density of the fluid multiplied by the gravitational constant G multiplied by the height from the surface of the fluid. So, note that for P2, the height is H2, and for P1, the height is H1. So, we get a multiplied by density of fluid multiplied by G multiplied by height 2 minus density of fluid multiplied by G multiplied by height 1. So once again, let's take these two terms out because these two, these two terms appear on both sides. So we take out the density and we take out the gravitational constant G. And we simply get H2 minus H1 is multiplied by density of fluid times g the gravitational constant times the area of the face equals now this is simply the change in height so let's change the, uh, let's take the change in height and place it by the area and <coughs> and we get the density of our fluid multiplied by g multiplied by area times change in height now what is the area 
times change in height. Well, in this case, what is our change in height? Well, our change in height is simply this guy. It's the height of our block. So if we take the area of this face and multiply it by the change in height, we will get the volume of that block. So this is actually the volume. So let's take the volume and replace it, and we get the density multiplied by volume multiplied by the gravitational constant. But let's notice what the density times volume is. Remember what density is. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So if I multiply both sides by volume, I get density times volume equals mass. So this is actually the mass. So I get the mass multiplied by g, the gravitational constant. But let's be very specific about what this mass is. What is it a mass of? Is it the mass of the block or is it the mass of something else? Well, notice that this density is the density of the fluid and this volume is the volume that this block takes up. So what this must be, it's the mass of the fluid that's displaced by this block. So it's not the mass of the block, but it's the mass of the fluid that this block with some volume V displaces. So once again, this is the mass of the fluid displaced and not of the block. So the force acting along the Y direction is this force and this is known as the force of buoyancy or the buoyancy force. Now this buoyancy force comes from Archimedes principle which states the following. Archimedes principle states that the buoyancy force on an object immersed in a fluid is equal to the weight of that fluid displaced by that object. Once again Archimedes principle states that the buoyancy force which we just found is equal to the mass of the fluid that's displaced by this block multiplied by the gravitational constant. So let's, so let's mention one more important detail about the buoyancy force. So in which direction will the buoyancy force point? Remember force, the magnitude of the buoyancy force is given by the following formula. But what is the direction? Force is a vector, so it has both direction as well as magnitude. Well, because the pressure at the bottom of my, of my solid block is always higher than at the top, because of the formula, the density times g times height, because this pressure is always higher than this pressure, that means that the force will always point upward. The force at the bottom will always be greater than the force at the top. So the difference between those two forces is known as the buoyancy force. The magnitude is given by this uh, formula and direction always points upward. So now that we know what Archimedes principle is, let's try to use it to answer the first question. In other words, why do certain objects float while others sink? So let's look at the following example. Show that a wooden log with a density of 700 kilograms per meter cubed and a volume of 3 meters cubed will float. So we basically want to use Archimedes principle and the buoyancy force to answer this question. So let's begin by first finding the mass of our log. To find the mass of that log we simply use our density formula. Density of log is equal to mass of log divided by volume. Now let's rearrange this formula so that we can solve for our mass of the log. We find, after bringing volume to this side, mass of log is equal to density of log multiplied by volume. So we plug in our knowns. We know the volume is 3 meters cubed and the density is 700 kilograms per meter cubed. The meters cubed cancel and we get 700 times 3 which is 2100 kilograms. So the mass of our log is 2100 kilograms. Now we want to find what the mass of the fluid is that is displaced when that log is fully submerged. And we need to use Archimedes principle. Archimedes principle states that the volume of fluid displaced is equal to the volume of our object, in this case the log. So once again, if log is fully submerged into our water, 
what is the mass of the fluid displaced? So we use Archimedes principle and we use our density formula for water. So density of water is equal to mass of water divided by the volume. And by Archimedes principle, this volume is the same volume as we used up here. So the density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. So we basically plug that in and we multiply it by three meters cubed, the same volume as we used up here. And we find that our mass of water displaced is 3,000 kilograms. This is more than the actual mass of our wooden log. In other words, if we are to draw the forces acting on our log while it is fully submerged, we get two forces. One force is acting downward, and that's m times g. It's the gravitational force. The upward force is the buoyancy force that's acting upward on our block. So in this case, the buoyancy force is larger than the force of gravity, and that's because the amount of water that is displaced is greater in magnitude. It has a higher value, 3,000 versus 2,100 kilograms. So that means because my force upward is greater than my force downward, if I take my block and submerge that block, there will be a net force going upward. So once I release my object, the log, will accelerate upwards until it reaches the surface. And that's exactly why my object will float. In other words, whenever the density is lower for the object than of the fluid, that object will float. Notice that our density was 700 kilograms per meter cubed, while the density of the fluid is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Because the density was lower than the density of our fluid, this object, the wooden log, will float. Now, if the density was higher, the density was, say, uh, 1,100, then that object would not float. It would sink straight to the bottom. So one last important detail that I'd like to mention about floating object. A floating object displaces an amount of fluid equal to its own weight. In other words, since in this case the mass of the object was 2100 kilograms, the amount of fluid, the amount of mass of the fluid that this object, this floating object displaces is equal to 2100 kilograms. So this object, which has a mass of 2,100 kilograms, displaces an amount of fluid, in this case water, that's equal to 2,100 kilograms. And to find the fraction of the object that's submerged in our fluid, we simply take the density of the object divided by the density of the fluid and multiply that by the volume of that object and we'll find the amount of volume that is submerged in the water. So now I want to answer the second question using Archimedes' principle. So we want to find out why does an object weigh less in water than on land. So to begin, let's draw our diagrams. Let's draw the diagram for the object on land, and let's draw our diagram for the object in fluid, let's say water. Now, so let's place our object on a scale on land, and we want to find what the weight is of this object, and then we want to compare it to the weight of the object in the, on the same scale in water. So let's go back to this guy. So let's draw all the forces acting on our object along the y-axis. So we find the force of gravity points downward and the normal force that the ground exerts on our object or the scale exerts on that object points upward. So we know from Newton's law of motion that since this object is not moving, it's stationary, that means the net force along the y-axis is zero. So let's choose going upward to be positive and going downward to be negative. So we find that the net sum of the forces along the y-axis is zero equals normal force minus force of gravity. So let's bring this guy to that side and we find that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity. So the weight that this scale will read will simply be our force of gravity. Now let's take the same scale and that same object and place it into our fluid into the water. Now let's draw all the forces. Now we have not two forces but three forces. We still have the force of gravity point downward and we still have the normal force pointing upward. But now 
we have the buoyancy force, which is also pointing upward on our object. So now we have to take all these three forces into consideration. So we're going to make the assumption that our object is not moving, it's stationary. So that means the sum of the net forces is also zero according to Newton's second law of motion. So in the water, we see that the sum of the net forces equals zero equals the force of gravity, now we're choosing downward to be positive and upward to be negative. So, force of gravity minus buoyancy force minus normal force. So let's bring all the negatives to this side and leave the normal force on the other side. And we get the normal force is equal to force of gravity minus the buoyancy force. So now our normal force, the weight of the object is no longer the force of gravity, but now it's the force of gravity minus the buoyancy force. So because of that buoyancy component, our actual weight of the object in the water will be less compared to the weight of the object on land. And that's exactly why if you try lifting a very heavy object in the water, you will find that it's easier to lift it in the water than on land. Because in the water, there is this buoyancy component that we obtain from Archimedes' principle.